getting into this next segment right here. The preseason schedule got announced. I, I don't know. Maybe it was announced when they announced the main schedule. I don't know. I saw it like yesterday, and I figured, hey, let's talk about it because the preseason, the preseason matters, um, especially for the Ravens in the amount of battles that the Ravens are going to be going through. I did a video on the wide receiver four depth chart position between Duvernay and Tylen Wallace, but there's that. There's the Boykin versus Proche wide receiver six. There's the who's going to be the linebacker. Blake Gallagher had a really good, um, you know, rookie mini camp. Could, could he make the squad? All those undrafted rookies are Darius Washington. See how our corners play. So many different things that we're going to be looking at. You know, looking at the edge rushers. Like, can these guys get sacks? Like, this preseason, I think last year really showed how important the preseason is. I mean, you know, am I kind of happy that we just got to go into football and, like, we didn't have meaningless games? Like, yeah, but at the same time, I love those meaningless games. The Ravens, like, never lose in the preseason. Of course, I'm saying that now. We'll probably lose at some point. But, you know, whatever. If we lose, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you all don't know, we go Saints, then Panthers, then football team. Um, starting with the Saints, I, I, I will talk about all of these games and why they're a good matchup and what to look for. Uh, but we'll start off with the Saints and – Joshua, what what do you think about us playing the Saints? Like, is there anything like you're look kind of looking forward to, or just you know anything you're looking to uh, in the Saints first game? Uh, not anything. I mean, other than Mr. Crab Legs, you know, if you get out there and play, that's my. You know, I don't care what anybody say. That's my boy. He ain't got his eye. He ain't got the eye surgery. James no Winston thing. is one of my top five favorite football players of all time. For people that do not know, I have tweeted this before. Uh, not on the not on the TTD <laughs> account, but on different accounts. I have tweeted out Jameis Winston is in my top five. I think he was in my top five favorite athletes ever. I don't even think it was just football plays. We we both love Jameis. Uh, Jameis is definitely a fun guy to watch. So yeah, Absolutely. definitely, Absolutely. definitely looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing him get sacked too. But you know, as man, listen, <laughs> ah man, you know what? Right? I'm not. It's a it's a good it's a good preseason schedule, for the simple fact that everybody that was counted out last year and didn't get their opportunities, they get them now, and you know who you know who I'm looking for to get his opportunity right off the bat, off the bat, Mr. James Poche his damn self. I ain't worried about my flex title. My James Poche, James Poche needs all three games, all three games to showcase what he really can do to separate himself because <sighs> drafting Bateman, drafting Tylen, we, you know, we gave, you know, Eric DeCosta said, he said what he said in the smoke screen um, interview as far as, you know, you know, I feel disrespected about, I feel disrespected that you guys were even yep. thinking we need a wide receiver and all that other stuff. Well, you know, hey, he, 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 you know, he, it's, it, it, even though yeah, even though he said yeah, he felt disrespected, in the back of his mind, like y'all right, I, I'm working on it. Don't worry about it, though. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's, and that's exactly what he did. So you know, I'm I wouldn't say I'm looking I'm looking for anything special from the opposing team, but you know, I'm just looking for those guys that you know truly need need this opportunity. And it's just great to have football back. So you know, eight eight fourteen, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready to watch some Ravens football. Yeah, and, you know, you talk about James Proche. We get to see what James Proche can do as a as – a, maybe he'll never play as the first option on the field, but maybe he'll be the number two option. We'll mm -hmm. get to see what Duvernay is as a one option. We'll get to see what Tyler Wallace is as a one option. Probably a little bit of Bateman as a one option. All of those things will be a lot of fun to watch. Um, you know, we didn't get to see Duvernay and Proche last year, which you brought up, Joshua. Like, we would have gotten to see them. What can they be as the number one? Um, we don't get to see it. Um, but in terms of this first Saints game, one matchup really kind of stands out. Paulson Adibo, I'm a big Stanford fan for people that don't know. It's part of the Sidney Fehoko love. Uh, <laughs> Paulson Adibo, drafted by the Saints. I'm a huge fan of Paulson Adibo. Um, he was actually a projected first-round pick before he sat out last year at the cornerback position. We get to see him match up against maybe a Bateman. We get to see Bateman against uh, Paulson and Debo, or maybe Tyler Wallace against Paulson and Debo. Like, like we get to see these young guys go at it. Um, are they going to go at it like ten times in their career? No, because you know they're the Saints, and we don't play the Saints very often. But we still get right. to see 
um, a young, two young players go after it um, in there. Uh, those are kind of the, the Saints one is, has the least amount of matchups because uh, they went, you know, they went edge rusher, linebacker, um, you know, corner quarterback. Uh, and then I think they drafted a tackle, but come on, like he's like a fifth or sixth round tackle. I'm not expecting him to be yeah, yeah. overly good. Uh, but in the next game, this is the one. Well, okay. I love both these next games, but number eight overall, J.C. Horn is going to be matching up against Rashad Bateman most likely. We get to watch that. And everybody in Baltimore was hyping up this man, Terrace Marshall Jr. Okay? We get to see Brandon Stevens. Maybe we get to see a Sean Wade matchup against the Terrace Marshall Jr. Like, we get to see how good these guys do against the young wide receiver uh, that so many of us were calling for. Now, initially, I was on the Terrace Marshall Jr. train. Then I switched off of it, and I was like, nah, I don't really draft him. But – now we get to see, all right, did it work out? It, was it the right call? Um, sure. And we can see, true. hopefully, hopefully we see Brandon Stevens go out, put the absolute clamps on Terrace Marshall Jr. Uh, but, you know, if he struggled, like Terrace Marshall Jr., Terrace Marshall Jr., second round pick, Brandon Stevens, third round pick based off of potential. So it's not like if he doesn't clamp him completely, it's like right. a bust. Like it's just a good first test um, for those guys. And then obviously J.C. Horn, uh, likely matching up against Bateman. That's going to be a lot of fun. J.C. Horn, first cornerback picked in the draft. And then Rashad Bateman, best wide receiver drafted. Just kidding. I, I'm not going to disrespect Jamar <laughs> Chase like that. But, um, I, you know. <laughs> I, I think, I think J.C.'s actually wearing number eight out of, uh, out of, out of, out of respect of uh, Mamba mentality, Kobe, Kobe Bean. I believe I did hear that. Yes, I, I did hear that. Uh, which I love that players can now rep the uh the one through ten or the one the one through twenty, I think they can rep. Yeah, so it's 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 dope. And then again, it's like it's different, it's a little weird, you know. It's gonna feel like college. I mean, yeah. we get to go out there. I wish we could see a zero because then we could see Bateman repping that number zero. Man, um, if you wear zero in the, in the NFL, you gotta be like a a, 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 a Rick Goldberg playing linebacker. You just got to be nasty as hell. <laughs> we got Brian Bosworth at number zero yeah, right yeah. there. <laughs> but You know, you know who could rep number zero? Malik oh. Harrison could rep number zero. That would I be like a guy I'd be like, yeah, you better pull it up. I mean, he reps four zero right now. But Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, uh, Too bad it's know, not allowed. I don't, I don't know. Carolina still got the, the XFL sensational – quarterback pj jackson but um if he's there and get some time in man that dude that that dude has a story on he has a story you know and i love the way he plays man i would definitely love to see him out there you know playing against our defense and i definitely like to see mr uh away and Dalen hayes getting that getting that to him man and forgot to mention they drafted brady christensen a tackle in the third round so third round tackle versus uh oh. Dafe away, Dalen Hayes. We get to see how those guys do in the edge. Like, it's the first kind of test of, like, okay, at least it was a third round pick that we can see them matching up against. Because obviously, you know, in the preseason, we may get one snap against a good, you know, one series against a good tackle. Right. Um, but, like, you know, in terms of young tackles, we get to see them uh, against, you know, NFL tackles at least for a little bit in Brady Christensen that was drafted. So, that's one guy to look out for. Those are mostly it. Um, you know, they drafted Chief Smith um, in the sixth round, but sixth round wide receiver, you know, I I don't know. That's not like crazy, but it's nothing, you know. It'll be cool to watch, but not something I'm like, oh, I got to watch this. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch She Smith versus Sean Wade. No, it's not a matchup <laughs> I'm really looking forward to. But um, the final game, this, is, the, this is the one. Washington football team. So I'll go through the guys they drafted so then we can go over who we get to watch against them. Samuel Kosme, offensive tackle out of Texas, second round pick. Okay. Um, we get to watch Adafi away. We get to watch Dalen Hayes go after him. Um, then they drafted Benjamin St. Juice, a teammate of Rashad Bateman at Minnesota. I had Benjamin St. Juice. In a mock draft of mine, I was a big fan of this. He's a big physical corner, okay. uh, but you know, former teammates matching up in the preseason—that's a lot of fun to watch. Then this is the one: 
They drafted Diami Brown, uh, wide receiver out of North Carolina, which was which was a real sleeper wide receiver for a lot of us Ravens fans. I believe Agreed. we talked about Diami yeah. in our sleeper day two wide receivers video. Yeah. Um, we get to watch him against a Brandon Stevens, against a Sean Wade, and see how they do. And those matchups are what make preseason fun. It's it's not about who wins and who loses, even though the Ravens always win. But um, you know, <laughs> it's about it's about watching the fun stories. Like I will never forget watching some some quarterback wearing number four for the Dallas Cowboys coming out and balling out in preseason. Then obviously Tony Romo gets hurt, and I was like, you know, my stepmom's a big Cowboys fan, and I was like, don't worry, there's this dude in, in preseason named Dak Prescott. <laughs> then Dak Prescott comes out, and I was like, oh my goodness, I was joking when I said, don't worry, they got Dak Prescott, but he was a beast. Uh, but like all those types of stories, we get to watch them. We'll hear about, you know, oh this undrafted guy, you know, he did all this. Shout out UndraftedSports.com, uh, you know. But those different stories that we get to see. Remember the Browns. Two years ago, they had the guy who snuck into training camp or something. I think he returned a punt for a touchdown. Like, like it was like the craziest story. story like somehow story he walked in and was like, "Yeah, man. I know this guy." Yeah, and he just yeah. got in, <laughs> and he showed up, balled out, returned a punt or a kick for a touchdown, and it was like, "Oh my goodness, this guy!" Unfortunately, didn't make the team. But those storylines they happen all the time, and so we get to watch that. And it's so exciting. And then obviously the teammates matching up. Um, trying to see if they drafted anyone else. Uh, they drafted a safety. Uh, they drafted an edge rusher. Oh, they drafted Shaka Tony. I forgot they drafted Shaka Tony. That was my guy. I was very disappointed. That they don't need an edge rusher. Come on, give us Shaka Tony. But um, yeah, it, they got good wide receivers and a good offensive lineman and a good cornerback that they drafted. And we get to watch all those fun matchups. Um, and then they drafted a linebacker. You know, I believe he's going to be mat lining up something like an edge rusher or something like that. Even though he was an inside linebacker, I believe I read something about that. I don't, I don't follow every single piece of Washington football team news. I follow it a bit, but I, I, I believe he may be lining up at the edge. Um, not on sure. In the comments, y'all can let me know if I'm wrong. But yeah, yeah I'm just excited. Um, just excited. That's all I got, man. Now, let me ask you this. Since it's three games of preseason play, do we see the starters at any point? Or do you just feel like these three these three games are going to be for guys that's just truly fighting positions? Or you put the starters in, they get the reps in the first quarter, and from there, everybody else that's battling for positions have at it. I think – I think we see a lot of the starters mm. in every game. Uh, not like, but however, I think we'll m maybe get one drive of Lamar, one drive of Hollywood, and one drive of Sammy Watkins. Um, maybe a drive, maybe the last game Ronnie Stanley plays a little bit just to get him uh, rehabilitated. Maybe a little bit for, I bet Alejandro Villanueva or Villanueva plays a fair amount just to get him acclimated to the Ravens team. Yeah. But most of the time, it'll be the young players. Uh, but like guys like Rashad Bateman, Adafi Away, who are, who are who are clearly going to be um, major contributors, I think they'll play a significant amount because they are young. Um, even looking at guys that were drafted last year, I think Patrick Queen will play a, a fair amount. I think Malik Harrison will play a fair amount just because. They didn't get it last year. Like, it's just extra game time. You know, yeah. Patrick Queen, you and I have talked about it. You know, he, he plays like a, a chicken with his head cut off sometimes. Hopefully not this year, but he'll get just more practice reps and things like that. So in terms of, the, like, the big boys, I think we'll maybe see a drive from them probably in the second game against Carolina mm -hmm. would be my guess just because the last game is like, all right, let's get this roster situated. Um, so then it's like, you know, you play a drive, bye week, Let's take on the Raiders on Monday Night Football. So that that would be my assumption. But okay. you know, I'm not Harbaugh. What do you think, man? I really feel like I feel like we see the start. We'll see the starters for the first game, and after that, it's going to be everyone that's fighting for uh, positions. And honestly, I don't mind it because when you lose a draw, you want to see what these guys can contribute on the next level and what can they contribute to, you know, a contender team like the Ravens themselves. 
And yeah. honestly, man, I'm looking forward to see Big Sexy on the field. Oh, oh yeah, man. that's that's the one. That's I, the one. He I, better I, be I'm, out I'm, there I'm at all to, times. I'm ready, see, I'm ready to see a pancake in the, in the purple and black, man. I'm looking forward to that. I, I, I'm definitely um, the front. I'm 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 definitely uh, curious about the line play this year. So um, I'm definitely keeping my eye on that. So um, yeah, man, I definitely definitely feel like you know the the guys that's coming in, especially like the you know the rookies or the sophomore season Ooh. guys. Also, Bradley Bozeman, we get to see him at center. I, I didn't even think about that. I just thought about that right now. Oh, man. It's a big time thing to watch out for. Do you feel like Bradley Bowles will be the next Ryan Jensen for us? I think he could be. I, this whole offensive he's, line, I just realized they have never played next to the guys they're next to. Yeah. Ronnie Stanley's never played next to, most likely, Ben Cleveland. Yeah. Ben Cleveland's never played next to him or Bradley Bozeman. Bozeman's never played next to Cleveland or Zeitler. Zeitler's never played next to Villanueva. We got to get these guys at all times. Play them the entire game. I don't care about the backup. Sorry, Tyree yeah. Phillips and uh, Ben Breedison. <laughs> and uh, I think those are all the back. Patrick McCarry, I think, is a backup um, still. But that's what, all I think. Ben Powers. Yeah, they do, they do need they do need the reps um, as a unit together. So, no, I definitely yeah. agree with that. I'm not trying to get destroyed in week one against Oakland because we have no chemistry on the offensive line. Listen, if we lose to Oakland, hi, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that 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 recording is going to go or that episode. <laughs> like Ravens family, uh, you know, if y'all been with us, and I thank you for the ones that has been with us. Understand the the times we have lost. Oh, we let them have it, man. Especially uh, the guy that left to go to New England. That Matt, what's his name? Matt Judo. Yeah, that guy. We, we let him have it a lot. We, every time the Ravens <laughs> lost, we were just like, are you kidding me, Matt Judon? Are you serious? It was always Matt, Matt Judon. It was Judon and Roman every single week. It was just Matt, like, every yeah, time yeah. we lost, it was, yeah, his name it was is Matthew calling now. for them. Yeah, his name is Matthew now. Uh and I, I had I had a I had I guess I had a, a healthy debate with um my Ravens with a fellow Ravens fan in uh Ravens Nation group on Facebook. If you listen to the podcast, man, listen. Um uh, I call I called Matthew Judon average. Are you crazy? Why would you call him average? I mean he did a lot. What has he done for us, my guy? <laughs> Well, Judon's no longer here, so we don't got to worry about that. Um, but I think that's good for the preseason uh, schedule. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to the Ravens content. Come through on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, 